as you know, today it's a very basic subject, better room, better behavior, better learning. I've titled this workshop. Uh, sometimes I think the most basic rules we forget because we think it's so easy. Uh, yes, I will do it tomorrow or next day. And then the, the time is going on and uh, we, have, uh, we know that we should do something, but we don't know. So I tried to uh, ask maybe also your children I was, every time when I got into the, into the room of my daughter, I was like, oh my God. Everywhere there were like clothes lying around, toys, books. And it was like, oh my God, I was really like getting crazy. And always you were fighting, uh, you have to clean up your room. And it, it was really, it was, I felt bad afterwards. My daughter was crying, I was crying. And it was really, it was not a good time. So I said, we have to do something and we tried, or I started to, to read about and then say, okay, we, do the, we are going in action. So the program today will, de will be a first introduction, but I think this I can leave it because you already know me and uh, there is no new member at uh, this workshop. So I think I can just switch or skip this introduction. Then uh, I will show you about the, the chaos in my room, the impact that has uh, the environment on, of, on our person, so especially on our children, and uh, organization of the room. And of course, what my experiences were with my daughter and how it was before and how it is now. So, so I skip this introduction, you know me already. So, this is a first picture. So I don't know if you see this picture, what does it make with you? Do you say, oh, great, this girl is laughing, she's happy. But if you see at her desk, it's everything is lying around. I think she's a very creative person. But I think if you have to ask her, give me a pen or give me a, a, a glue, then she has to, 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 to search on her desk and uh, have a look after her things. So first of all, it needs a lot of energy because you have to look after it. Second, I'm getting nervous because I'm waiting to get this pen and then we start to cry and then again, oh, why didn't you clean up your room? And it's again and again, every time the same story. Also this room, if you go inside, it's like, oh my God. And if you think we, or our brain is working normally. And if you see this picture, it has already an incredible impact on our brain. So you have to imagine what the impact is on a child with ADHD or autism. So it's 10 times or 100 times bigger. And if you see around the eye, there is no island where you can rest your eye or just just stand there and, and say, oh my God, I don't know where, where to watch, where to, it's really chaotic. And I think that's also impacting on the brain of the children. They have no space or it's no, it's really like the, the room is like shouting, like really like, ah. So if you see another room, I don't know if, what do you think or what feelings do you have, uh, Maria and Shaima and uh, Irina, if you see this room, do you say, oh, it's like, it is with my children, or do you think, oh, it doesn't affect me very much because it's a cre creativity? Or what do you have, what kind of feelings do you have when you see such rooms? I personally get very irritated in rooms like this. Yeah. And my problem is actually that uh, this is, uh, uh, my kids keep bringing the toys down into our living area. <laughs> so this, I mean, it doesn't get that messy, but it yeah, does yeah, get yeah, quite yeah. messy. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Uh, they don't play in their rooms. Their rooms are basically where the toys are stored and where they sleep and where the clothes are, but then everything is brought down. Yes. I've took uh, extreme pictures to see the impact. Of course, it's not like this. And also as it was in my with my ch child but I think to to get really the idea behind it to see the impact I took extreme pictures I think so I, I already 
I can say I already got to this situation. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 and uh, what you mentioned about the pen, it was uh, in the other apartment was every day. He wanted, I needed to sign something because because he doesn't find his, his things on his room and his uh, secretary. So he goes to mine where I have everything like pens and pencils. Mm -hmm. And he goes, he takes one after the other until it's empty as well. Yeah, yeah. And then I want a pen to myself and I can't find one. And then mm -hmm. he says, why? It's, mm -hmm. I, I can relate to that. And um, yeah, I want a new beginning and I know how uh, it's a big mm -hmm. effort but it's easy to do every day a little bit and yes. uh, and, cool. and what I found uh, my experience is I also tended to say clean up your room or do this and for for a kid with ADHD it's like it's such a complex uh, mm -hmm. demand he yeah. feels overwhelmed and like I will never be able to to do it right it's, it's such a, I will yeah. never and then he can't even start because it's like right uh, it's, it's so everywhere. overwhelming you don't know where to start yeah, yeah. So Sorry. I think it's up to us to, you know, you will tell us more, but to, to organize it and in a way that, he, well, you can just try to put it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, it's stickers or I'm trying yeah. also to go through solutions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very so, much. For so the next uh, subject, the cows in my room. So... I've, the people get already very impressed if you walk into a room and you look around it say okay it's messy or it's not it's very cleaned up but if you will take a picture and have a look at the picture it will have a bigger bigger impact and then you will see oh my god that's what I happened with my room I took a picture before I was just looking normally at the room and I thought oh it's not very nice maybe we could change something but afterwards when i took the picture it was very incredible because i think you got, have another perspective perspective and i think what i suggest always is to do the picture and then try to analyze the picture with your child for example like uh, what do you see how what does the room make with you when you're looking at the picture and uh what does your child say about this room try to to help them with um, adjectives is it uh, loud is it uh, dark is it messy is it uh, it's chaotic i think when you hear uh, the adjectives or helping your child with adjectives you get very close to the feeling of your children and you can really feel what how they are feeling or imagine how they are feeling I guess you can but, emotions as well yes so to that so which is important to recognize so when they come to that condition sometimes in a school or somewhere yeah. when they play with the friends the same similar emotions they might experience yeah. yeah and you have to help your child because i think it's quite it's too difficult to them to explain you have to help them really what do you think it's it, it's your room dark it's light it's heavy it's cozy it's messy do i feel secure in my room because it's uh, it's too difficult to explain so uh, if you just can give them a help i think then you will get a lot of information already about watching together with your child the, the picture you took about uh, of, of his or her uh, room just what i said before how does or she he or she describe the room and then after that you can ask your child, how does your dream room look like? What? How would it be if you could do or uh, if you could uh, uh, organize your room as you want? But then also help your child to, to with the colors, with the, because the child maybe will say, oh, I would like to have this and this and this and this. So help him with the like uh, colors, materials or you just wanted to say something, uh, Irina. Yeah, I just uh, say help with the ideas as well. Sometimes they don't know where to start. Yeah, so give yeah. Them yeah. yeah. Make what it's also very funny. And what the children like to do is to make a mood board. You, you have maybe old magazines or it doesn't matter what. Then you just tell your child, what do you like? And then just make different mood boards. One you make only with colors. 
one you make only with like objects and one you make only like materials or so what do you like do you like uh, wood do you like uh, uh, more like if it's fussy like uh, carpet and then with this after this you can really match all these mood boards and find a direction and and try to find how could be or what could be the imagination of, of your child, how the room could look like. Okay. And for example, uh, I have, uh, when I'm using or when I'm doing or talking with about the colors, I have this, I don't know how it's called in, in English. I don't know, just the color samples, yeah. Uh, do you, can the others see me in the small picture or not in the? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Ah, okay. And so sometimes only just, I think I, I bought this, but you can, if you go to Migro, I think in the Migro, yes, they have so different uh, papers with different colors and they are for free. Just take a, uh, some of them and just show it to your child and say, oh, what kind of colors would you like? But then also try to be more soft colors, not like the very uh, like orange or red because these colors are very vibrant and they will not count down your child so they will push it up so also pay attention when choosing colors I know the maybe the girls who would all have red, uh, pink but maybe say okay we can have a pink but maybe a pastel pink or match it with the black with the white or with the beige so it, it's this calm and, and light touch of, of the room so you can a lot influence without that the child does, um, how do you say, doesn't recognize that you are already having an idea how it could be. Yeah. So, you give so the final choice should be made by child. Yes. You give the lead, you have the lead. And the leading him to, to make that decision. Yeah, yeah. And Vesna, is there like a, a recommended uh, uh, color or or scheme like you were yes. saying pastel but yeah uh, is it better to stay for example in yellowish tones or bluish tones more uh, fiery uh, tone I yeah. mean I've did a, 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 a feng shui for five years before I started with this ADHD so I am a little bit uh, uh, how do you say um, how do you say in English uh, touched by this subject so normally I choose I try to choose the colors by the element of the child and then if the child for example is like earth it's all the, the yellow colors the brown colors I try to take always the, the pastel or the soft color and where they are sleeping I recommend always to have more dark colors because dark colors they're really coming down like dark blue most of the of, of uh, the clients I'm telling to choose dark colors, they say, oh my God, it's like, oh, dark. But if you do just a little wall, just beside of the bed, it's really, it looks fantastic. But of course, it's, it needs a little bit courage to, to use this, those colors. So, uh, and Vesna, by element of the child, you mean element according to the star sign? Uh, I'm sorry, yes, I'm not very... Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay. according to his birth date, yes. Okay. Because you know, I had also a, a child, for example, because every color is connected with an element. For yeah. example, blue and black is water, red, orange is fire, or what's uh, white and uh, silver, metal colors is earth. And for example, I had a client, and uh, his uh, daughter was always, uh, how do you say in English, doing pee, pee during night? Yeah, bedwetting. Yeah, right. And then I came into the room and it was all blue. So uh, it was really the element water, what was really overwhelming of water. So we tried, we kept a little bit of blue, we took it out. I don't know if it, if it was just because of this, but it got better and better. So the, the, the colors can really have a very impact on, on the environment. Because every color has a different um, vibration. And especially I'm working when I'm working with colors, I'm working only with natural colors. This, these are colors with natural pigments. And when the sun is falling on, on these colors, it gets a really nice vibration. You can really see if you take an artificial color or a, a natural color, it's a big difference. They are a little bit more expensive, 
but it's really worth it. So I don't know if you have more questions about uh, the oh. colors. So no, thank you. So next, uh, this I had just. Uh, I will show you uh, uh, some pictures to see before and after. It's if you see the first and the second picture. Of course, the second picture is cleaned up, but not only it's cleaned up. You know, there is. You see, there is an organization. There is a structure. You don't have this wall decoration. You don't have all, all, also the cupboard. There are a lot of uh, books and uh, toys in the cupboard. At the right side, you have also a cupboard, but it's closed. And if you close it, you don't have the, the eye. Uh, it's quite difficult to explain. You see it's calmer than in the first picture. So also in the, in the room of my daughter, you will see it afterwards. I have, a, it's very maybe clean. I, I've said to her we have to put maybe a little bit more warm color inside, but it's still, it's, you can feel the calm in the second picture compared to the first picture. And that's also will calm your, your child if he's surrounded by, by a, a room who is calm, deco, calmly decorated. So also here, it's just a little difference, but you see in the second, in the after room, there is a certain flow. There's like a flow. If I could do a, a, an arrow, it's a flow going around the table. And just to putting away the carpet, it's also a big impact on the room. It's really, it's lighter, it's flowing, and it's, it's I don't know how to say it. It's, it's clean, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's organized. And they didn't change a lot of things. So you can see only if you just change a few things, yeah. just to, uh, uh, to put away the carpet, that there is nothing on the ground. It gives already a calmer atmosphere. So sometimes it just, it's enough just to uh, take two, three things away and then see, okay, how does it look like? Maybe for some it's say, oh no, it's, it's too empty for me. But you can really see a difference or already have an impact by just uh, taking away just one or two things. Yeah. Yeah, and also you see it's also the colors, it's green and blue, but these are like soft colors. It's not really the dark blue or the dark green. It's not this uh, couleur pétillante. I don't know how you say in English. It's, uh... I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So that is the, the room how it was it before the, of my daughter. But the first she was with my son. They were two, together in one room. And then they had uh, this Ikea, very famous Ikea cupboard. Who, they had a lot of toys. Everything was inside. You see the open space. And it's like, it's, it's nice. It's very colorful. But I think for a child with ADHD, it's too much. It's too much, uh, yeah. It's vibrating too much. So what I did, first of all, I put the sound, my son out of the room because I said, first of all, she needs a room just by herself so that when she's going and she needs to have just peace, she can go to her room and nobody else is in, inside. So that was the first. Now it, how it looks today. It's very, how can I explain? It's light, it's clean. It's really structured. If I, I prepare something here, maybe if you can see it, yeah. That's also very important when you are structuring your room. You have a look of your room, you maybe make, make a, a ground plan. I'll show you like this. And the two most important things is, where is the door? And where is the window? So that's already enough. Then normally, as you have to imagine, when you are an animal and you have to hide and you go into a room, normally by instinct, the animal goes in an area where he can overview where the enemy is coming in. So maybe it's a little bit a silly story, but just to imagine. So if you are standing here, the best place for the bed would be here. 
because the child has the overview who is coming inside so he get not scared or if someone is coming just and he doesn't see it or also this in this direction here so he can also see so he feels secured because he has an overview of the entrance and what's also very important, I don't know if it's for every children, for every child, but for my daughter, it's very important. She needs to have a wall on one side. She says that she feels more secure if she knows that there's a, a wall behind, uh, beside a bed. When we were in, on the holiday this uh, summer, she was on a bed and it was like, uh, the room was like this, and the bed was like this. And there was no wall here and no wall there. And it was very, she was really, it was like a, a very big crisis because she said, I can't sleep without a wall next to my bed. So we had to put the, the bed really to the wall so that she felt really I'm secure. And the other one, the other thing is also when you're doing, organizing your room, the second most important thing is where is, the window because if you put the desk here and the child is sitting here he will always looking outside he will be always distracted if you put it here let's say here it's also not very comfortable because the child doesn't really look or hasn't really access to the entrance door so where I, or you put it, when you have the bed here, maybe wait, I have, I had too much. And uh, my daughter has her desk here facing the wall and the wall is completely blank, white. She has no distraction. She can see if someone is coming in and she doesn't see here is a cupboard where she has her decoration and all her picture stuff so it doesn't really distract her because she's watching at the wall so i think it's very important before you start to decorating to uh, buy curtains everything make just a little plan and look where could, where could be the best place to put the bed and the um, the desk, yeah. Also, what I don't really recommend, or when you have the desk here, and you have the bed here, so say, oh no, I would like to go to bed instead of studying, so maybe it's not a good, uh, not a good uh, idea. But of course, it's personal, and you have to try it out. Some kinds, they, some ch children, they don't like it at all if you do it like this for this. So you have to try and, and maybe uh, change a few times till you see that, okay, it's okay for me and it's okay for my child. So I don't know if you have some questions of the, where to put your bed or... Sometimes it's also, if you have more children, it's quite difficult. So it depends always of the room, of the space you have and... Uh, that's the other wall where my daughter has her cupboard where she's putting all she because you can't leave the room all only blank with no decoration so there is a wall where she can put her pictures where she can put uh, what she wants because it doesn't distract her when she's learning because the desk is on the other side so you can have a wall where it's, which is called also when she's playing it's in the back of of her so it doesn't distract her so that's why it's, i think it's very important important to organize, to do a little sketch, a plan of the room, and to think what would be the best thing to place, like decoration bed or desk. So that's her bed, it's on this side, as you see. Also above the, be above the bed, there's some pictures. The window is next to the desk, so it's not really in, uh, distracting her when she's studying. And then she has, of course, if you can see, there is written, uh, follow your dreams, they know the way. So I think it's always good to have such a little... Motivational notes. <laughs> yeah, right. And she's also 
follow your dreams. And I think it's kind of, of sentences that can really encouraging you. And I always say when she's a little bit down, I just say, telling to her, just have a look at your, at your picture. And that she's just smiling. It's, it's, it's small things, but I think it's uh, with a lot of impact. So then I think I have, yeah, colors. What I was talking before, I just will show you a, kind, um, a couple of pictures, mood boards I did uh, for Feng Shui. So just, it's nothing for you have used, you, you for using, but it just to give you an impression how the feeling changes, which color you are watching at. So. That's all earth colors, brown. You see, it's very calming. It's very, oh, you feel really, I don't know, cozy. It's very... Uh, grounded. Yeah. Yes, grounded. That's a good, yeah. Anchored or, yeah, yeah. Then if you see that the, uh, it's also the brown, it's also in going to the brown color, but it's, it's beige. It's, it's, it's more silent than the other browns because it's lighter and it's uh no, yeah. no. <laughs> it will come and go. okay next one yellow you see oh when you see yellow you when you see this oh you feel good it's like really it's uh yeah you get you're getting happy you're smiling energy yeah yeah and turquoise you feel oh it's fresh it's really oh my god it's like oh so you see the the difference between this oh sunny warm and this it's fresh it's really so to show you just the impact the colors can have on on you it's really it's very impact powerful or the dark blue it's again it's it's blue but it's still you see it's calming it's really like oh so uh so that's what just a little bit how do you say sideways just to show you the how the colors influence uh, on our environment yeah so organization of the room that's what i was talking before how to structure the room where to place the bed the desk and what's also very important for the children is the easy accessibility and the quick accessibility and handling because if they have to go first open the uh, the, the uh, cupboard then have a look oh i have to take out a um, tiroir how this in english uh, tiroir? a tiroir a drawer a drawer. A drawer. drawer yes it's already complicated so it's really as easy as possible and as quick as possible so that they don't even have to think about it because after a while they get used to it and it's getting automatically so it's easy accessibility also for the clean up the room to place the toys and the clothes so for example, that's why my daughter, she had before, if you can see on the right side here, there's a cupboard and she has everything there, underwear, socks, and it was always like, oh my God. Then we bought this cupboard and then she organized it. I, I bought this kind of organizers in Ikea. You can buy it. They are not very expensive. So now she's really organizing herself. There's uh, uh, slips and... Uh, Bra how do you say brass Brass, yeah yeah. Do yeah and where the socks are that that she, she did by herself they're only gray socks these are gray socks and these are the long socks these are the short socks colored and so she really it's incredible how she uh, become more organized and it's sometimes they're still lying socks around it's not that's always clean but in be as it was before it's really it, uh, it's really completely changed the same for the books. Before she had it in a, in a book shelter. Now it's in the cupboard. It's closed. She knows where the books are, but it's closed. So you don't have all these colors. You don't have this, all these books in front of you. It's closed. It's clean. And you don't see, you don't have it in front of your eyes. The same, time, the same for the, her brushes, her makeup. She doesn't use very a, a lot of makeup, but she still has something. So she really... And she also asked me, um, can I go with you once to IKEA and then I buy uh, for my cupboards? And I think it's very important also to include your children, to take them with you because they, ca they can choose what they want. I think it's very, uh, for them, encouraging, encouraging them also if they can choose for, the, for their room. And then they're also very busy and they're very 
proud when they uh, arrange their their rooms. Uh, Vesna, I'm curious to know how old is your daughter? Now she's 13. Okay. But right. it took uh, about, let's say, one, half, one hour, one year and a half to get where she's now. So uh, yeah. a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's already impressive. So. Yeah, it's really, but it's well really, done. Yeah. But uh, yes, sometimes it's still when I'm coming and say, oh my God, you have three pair of trousers, you have two pullovers. Then I don't start to say, just please, could you just put it where they have, it has to go and it's okay. And I'm also calm and if it's one day it's really messy, I don't tell anything anymore because I know she's really, she's, she has improved and it takes time. And shows that she has also the, the right to have one bad day or even two. No, of course. So, yeah. We have them too. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So the next is the, her studying place. So if you see, he, here is her desk. Just above her head, she has all the stuff she needs, the material. So she don't have to get up to get something. So it's also very important when they are learning or studying, it's very good when I, all the material they need, it's very close to them. So again, they're not distracted. When they have to get up and take something, ah, then ah, I could play with this, or I see this and this. So also try to keep very, everything close to, that they can just put their hand on up to take something. It's very, uh, it, it's very helpful. And what helped me a lot with my daughter is this whiteboard. We love to walk, to work really with this whiteboard. So uh, normally at the morning when she's asking me, I put her some uh, calcula, cal calcul, uh, mathematics. Yeah. And when she's well done, then I, I do like a little um, smiley or sometimes just in the, in the evening when before I'm going to sleep, I go to her room and she's sleeping and just uh, writing on the board, uh, uh, I love you or just uh, you did well today and in the morning. She's so happy when she's watching at the whiteboard. And sometimes also she's writing something for me. So it's really it's something to uh, an interacting board. Even if it's mechanical, it's not on the iPad, but it's, uh, it's very good. But it's even better, otherwise they typing better than actually. Yeah, yeah. She, she's still using her writing skills. Yeah, yeah. What I'm doing also sometimes when, when she has to study for an exam, then the easy, oh, Sophia, I'm tired, I'm lying on your bed, and you just do this resume on the whiteboard, and I'm watching, and then I'm asking her question, and then it's, it's a quite a fun, so it's uh, for both of us. So I think also we have to take it more like a, with a funny approach. It's easier for both, yeah. The next, yeah, I, take, I took a picture from closer, so you can see here, she has organized by colors, like French is pink, mathematics is blue, yellow, it's German. And then also the, according to the, the dossier she needs are also according to the color she needs uh, mathematics, the cluster, it's also blue. And also in the agenda, it's also the same color. So she really know, okay, I don't have, that's what I said before, easy handling. Just keep it constantly, like she knows, okay, blue, I don't even have to think, I know it's mathematics. But it depends. For another child, maybe red would be mathematics. So you have to choose. For her, it was clear. Mathematics are blue. So uh, then, what is the next? It's, that's uh, her whiteboard. And here, she has a weekly plan. So I, it's maybe it's not so very, it's not so sharp. But it's like uh, from Monday to I have to have a look to Friday, I think. Yeah. And so uh, we write together. We are looking at her agenda. And then we see uh, what, is, what she has to study. And then we split it in the different days. So she knows, even if she has the agenda of the school, but then we split it from the, for different days, what she, what she has to do today. And I don't have to tell her anymore. She knows it. And it's very, she gets a feeling to be independent. And more and more just to, to, to try that she is doing it by herself. You just stay beside of her. She's doing the planning. Of course, you still need to help her or him. But uh, after a while, she gets used to it and she knows how to organize even later for, the, for, the, for her life or when she, she's, she will be working. 
So it's like a funny approach. I took also some, I found a lot of weekly planners. They're very colored, very nice. But I took also here, I took really white ones to not have this, this attraction for, from her side. So, Vesna, this is like a paper uh, page from the planner? Or Wait, I, I show you, I show you, I just get it. Okay. It's like... Ah, okay, so it's ready weekly planner, so it's like yeah. complete. It's for, it, I bought it, it's 12 francs 90, and you have really from Monday to uh, Friday, and here's the weekend, and so you can really, and it's, uh, it's yes, 52, no, 53 uh, papers, if you, get, if you, maybe, if you make a mistake, so you really can, every week, I bought three of them, so uh, it's an easy, uh, way to do and to plan you don't have to do a tons of, of excel sheets and it's really it looks yeah okay nice yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice <laughs> so yes that i showed you already before that's how it was uh, it's organized her um wardrobe, wardrobe yes so at the beginning I told her just on, to, on the top you put all the sports stuff, then the pullovers, but it didn't work. Even if she's, she can see that it's only sports stuff on the first cover, then we said, okay, I will do it in another way. Then she did these different stickers and we put these stickers. Today she doesn't need them anymore, but it was just to get her used to it. And I think also with smaller children, you can do a lot of funny things. Even if they don't, if they are not capable to read already, you just make uh, small pictures, or you can cut pictures out of a, of a magazine, or yes, let them color the, themselves and just put the stickers on. So now uh, this is very very, and I really don't do anything here. So uh, you see, just here the T-shirt. She just, I said, yes, Sophia, could you please just put your t-shirt in the cupboard and she just throw it in, you see? So, uh, yeah, but uh, then that's also very important. What I said before, uh, easy and quick accessibility. This is for her dirty clothes. So at the beginning, when she was sitting on her bed, I told her, just throw, Try to throw your clothes into the into this basket, and sometimes it, 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 she didn't reach the, the basket, so I took it and put it inside. But it was also a funny way to approach how to how to deal with dirty clothes and to just don't just put it on the ground. And now it's working quite good. And she's even uh, she asked me, "Can I do once the laundry? Could you explain me how to do it?" And we did it together. So I think. She's really getting uh, this independence, and it's really it's it's so uh, uh, how do you say it's so imp impressing also really the, the progress is she's doing Be because at the beginning say oh my god I don't know but I think I was also be like this I was always complaining complaining and they, okay uh, why don't you understand but I think you just have to start and start a bit just to start for step by step. And it takes, of course, it takes time, but uh, you will see after a while, uh, it's working. they get used to it, yeah. I actually have uh, a question because, uh, for example, as I said, my, my son, he usually doesn't really play much in his room mm -hmm. and uh, he doesn't do homework either in his room. Mm -hmm. So mostly the homework gets done at the kitchen table, which I also encourage because then he doesn't mm -hmm. feel like you know, he's, uh, he's put away in a room alone to do his homework. Mm -hmm. It's something that happens within the family and we're all interacting together, etc., cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Do you have any um, recommendations? It's, 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 it's very quest, interesting, this question, because like, I, as, like as I am, I can't work in a room where it's very, very, um, how do I say, calm. I need to have like a background noise. So I, I think it's depending of your child, maybe your son is also, he needs this background noise to, to be capable to concentrate. So what I say uh, to the clients, try 
when he's in his room to put uh, uh, music just soft behind or maybe just you have to try some children they like to have soft music some children they need to have a little of, of a beat so it depends or if he really needs to have the family members uh, beside of him just try to put him on the table where you see that he has the less uh, um, how do you say distraction mm -hmm. And it's really it's interesting because, uh, yeah, as I said before, some children, they need this, this, this ground noise to, to concentrate. So you have to test a little bit. And yeah. also for, for the playing, if he wants also to play in, in, in your living room, maybe just make a small corner where it's really just uh, res reserved for himself. So he's yeah. still with you, but he has, he knows it's my corner. They are my toys and I can put it in my cupboard. So uh, I think it's, you have to try on and uh, try to try it on and uh, have a look if it works. Yeah. That's also what I did, try and error, just try, okay, it works, okay, I keep it. It doesn't work, try another thing. So I think, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Maybe, Shema, if he doesn't like something, in him, he doesn't feel comfortable, that's why he doesn't want to stay there a little bit longer. So, no, we never actually tried, Irina. It was all, uh, I mean, he's not, he's still not um, very independent when it comes to his homework. Uh, I, I'm still uh, very much involved when he's doing his homework. Uh, he usually uh, needs, uh, for example, when he's doing math, he needs somebody to show him how, uh, uh, how to solve the first problem of the page and then he can do the rest well, mostly normal. independently. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And usually it's uh, like we're doing, and he has a much younger sister who is uh, four years younger than him, mm -hmm. who is roaming around. Uh, and she is still at an age where she cannot just, you know, be left alone. And we tell her, okay, we are, we're going to disappear for an hour to do homework. Yeah. So for me, it's uh, like we're all sitting at the kitchen table. She's coloring or she's doing some mm -hmm. craft or something. And I'm sitting next to him doing something as well and we try to keep it as quiet as possible mm -hmm. but i'm still very involved and so how, how old is your your son now he's nine nine yeah yeah i now my daughter is 13 but till 10 11 i also had to be beside of her i think yeah yeah they're too 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 young to 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 do it by themselves i think they yes exactly and thinking of you know with their executive function being a third of their age behind uh, their peers so you would actually i mean you should be considering him more of a six-year-old rather than a nine-year-old mm -hmm. so imagine you know he's if, if he is theoretically a six-year-old mm -hmm. then you wouldn't leave a six-year-old to do homework alone but try i'm sure if you put a whiteboard in his room and mm -hmm. you leave him first to, to draw to do some drawings I'm sure that he will want to do the homework in his room. Okay, I can try that. Maybe start not from homework, but other, other activities. Just what I said, just to leave him first drawing and then say, okay, now we try to do some homework on it. What would you start to do? And I think it's uh, because if you um, buy the, uh, the whiteboard, try to buy the magnetic one. Because yeah, then I have one. To play with, yeah, with this um, uh, yeah. images. Magnet. Yeah. 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 Yeah, just then you can also, when doing mathematics with the whiteboard, you can a lot, a lot learn the structure, how to structure. And when do they learn how to structure in the mathematics, you will see they will also structure the light. That's what happened to my daughters. It's oh, very interesting. interesting. Yeah. yeah visual, okay. Huge, huh? so very and also yeah. that's about the mood boards, I think, by playing with them. So that's something we are... You see uh, the, my background, it's my yeah. baby before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some years ago. <laughs> so yeah, it's nice, it's yeah. Still there. So that's yeah. really helping them to build yeah. them in a different yeah. way as well. Um, yeah. I, I have a question. What about Miro? Of, of course, the girl, she's a 13 years old. And yes. So do you think that needs to be in the room? Is it small? Is it really disruptive? Or so she has a mirror, but I can show you how her mirror is. Uh, do you see? Small, yeah, okay. A so small one. A panel of the other yeah. pictures. Of yeah, the yeah. So, but what, what from sort of a scientific structure is the girl? 
just because I mean, visually I like the, the big uh, mirror. It's just like enlarging the room, but it can be also destructive. You can also put a mirror inside of the cupboard of the door when you open it. Okay. So it's closed, and when you need it, it uh, the child can open it. So it's closed, but you still have a big uh, mirror. You need to, yeah. So the yeah. Really yeah. Better. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was a pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.